Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Pisces, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of October 2024. I hope you are well. I'm using the Night Sun Tarot for you today and because I'm using the Night Sun Tarot I need to alert you to the fact that if there is any nudity and there is lots of nudity in this deck that appears in the cards that come up for you I will use my trusty little hound here to cover it up. <laughs> It's only going to work if it's one card though, so, you know. <clears throat> Anywho, if you wonder what I'm doing, that's what it is. Um, not because of any personal uh, issue with it, but because the AI bots for YouTube do not like that. So, there's one thing. Second thing, if the reading resonates with you and you would like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended that you can access at the end. That is via the first link in the description box. And the second link in the description box will take you to my private community, which is the Order of the Phoenix over on the Circle platform. You can get access to all of the extended content for all of the signs for no extra cost. Hang out with an extraordinary group of people and learn some stuff. So if that sounds like it might be of interest to you, you know what to do with that link. So, Pisces, let's flip the camera and see what's going on with you. Can I have three cards for Pisces, please? Oh, there's the first one. We have the Nine of Cups, Jupiter in Pisces, in your recent past. Can I have current energy for Pisces, please? Well, Knight of Pentacles, Virgo in the... Uh, represents Virgo energy, that. And what about... Uh, uh, what's coming towards Pisces, please, for October? What's going on with Pisces? Hmm... Um, we have the moon. At the bottom of the deck, we have the queen of wands. And I feel like she puts a different kind of, she casts a different kind of energy across the moon because the moon can sometimes be a little difficult to negotiate. To be honest, if it was any sign other than you or maybe cancer, I would say that there are, there are issues ahead with things of an unseen psychological, emotional nature, but because it's you, I actually feel like there's something more of the energy of drawing down the moon about this. But let's uh, let's get some clarifiers before I say any more and uh, see what's going on with you. Can I uh, have some clarifiers for this Nine of Cups? What is this about for Pisces? We have the Nine of Wands and we have the Nine of Swords. Triple Nine, look at that. Tell me about the Nine of oh, Knight of Pentacles, please. Justice. Big energy, Libra there, and the Eight of Pentacles. Oh, love it, getting goosebumps. Tell me about the moon, please. Why is the moon here for Pisces? We have the Death card, more watery energy with Scorpio, and the Two of Cups. This is huge, like Pisces, I'm tingling all over, right? Let me just move my coffee out of the way, because you don't need to see that, but I am coming out in spectacular goosebumps all over. Ooh, let's just give these a moment to uh, to dissipate before I try and uh, concentrate on what's going on here. I am um, going to scribble down, drawing down the moon, because I feel like that's exactly what's going on here. Let's uh, scribble this down, drawing down the moon. And if I don't write it down now... I'll have to watch the whole fucking, well, no, first couple of minutes, actually, of the video to remember what it was that I decided I was going to call the video. So let's put that there. Anywho, <clears throat> let's start over here. We have a trifecta of nines showing up. Now, the cards have their individual message. Um, and f for me, the nines most often represent that which we manage within ourselves. So the Nine of Swords would be how we manage our thoughts. The uh, Nine of Wands, how we manage our actions. Nine of Cups, how we manage our emotions. And it, it, particularly in the case of the Nine of Cups, it suggests to me that um, an understanding of lots of things, such as it's not anybody else's duty to sort out our emotional state and vice versa, and I think that's the important thing, here for you Pisces. Um, the fact though that we have all three cards, all numbered nine, all showing up at the uh, same time in the same part of the reading feels like 
rather than focusing on the individual meanings of the uh, the cards what we've got here is a is a collective understanding that is happening within oneself that is uh, somewhat signposting the way forward. Now, the Nine of Swords is an ugly card. It's it's a very uncomfortable card, even just to look at, particularly here in the Wild Unknown deck. Um, <clears throat> it can talk about uh, a loss of, well, it does simply speak about a loss of perspective, whether that's through um, being stressed, overthinking, anxiety. You know, it, it, it's a point, it's a low point in our mental processes where everything feels like it's overwhelming because we have lost perspective. And I love the fact that the Nine of Wands and the Nine of Cups precedes the energy of this because it says no matter how difficult it is for you to process things mentally sometimes, and we're all in places at points where that's, uh, that's true, the Nine of Wands and the Nine of Cups says it's our responsibility to learn to master these things. So the Nine of Wands is about boundaries, and that would be very important for you. you know, putting up boundaries against the, the need, the desire, the, the impetus to sort out other people's emotional states or hold other people responsible for your emo uh, emotional state or actions. You know, I, the Nine of Wands is an active card, right? So the active placing of boundaries being a really important thing in order to protect what is yours and what is blossoming, what is coming up to the surface for you. It's like an emotional rebirth, but it's one where you are gently encircled by the love that you have for yourself, right? And and as much as that used to make me cringe as a concept many many years ago like we have to love ourselves in order to put boundaries up if we don't think what we have inside is worth protecting then we won't protect it and that perspective is arrived at by way of our early experiences where we're told the way that we should behave we should act we should show up what we should think all this sort of stuff um this feels like i've kind of jump to the big picture here it feels like there's something really profound that is shifting here for you this month Pisces it is not saying that you are, are necessarily all in this state of um, you know ecstatic rebirthed joy neither is it saying that you are at the bottom of a dark hole that you don't need to you don't know how to get out of rather it is an understanding that in all senses the power to decide which way you are going lies with you, right? The power to retain your perspective or regain your perspective comes through actions and emotions about the things that you do, right? So feelings of powerlessness, um, you know, the things that keep you awake at night and stuff like that, the things that you don't feel like you have the uh, energy to be able to influence. This is saying, well, actually you do, right? And it's in your actions and it's in how you feel about regaining some sort of control over your life as you act in a particular way. Now, <clears throat> like I said, the fact that all three of them is showing up, we've got three cards number nine, right? Uh, so we've got like three plus three plus three, which equals nine. In numerology, nine is a number for me that I very closely associate with Pisces. I mean, not only is it the completion of the cycle of the root numbers, which run one to nine, not only is Pisces the completion of a zodiacal turn, you know, that starts with Aries and ends with Pisces, it suggests to me that you are coming to the end of a particular cycle of being a particular kind of way. Whatever that is. Now, there's something relatively abstract about this, but I feel like the abstraction is what I am seeing rather than what you are feeling, because it feels to me that you feel like this is very, very specific, actually. Um, I am not going to try and micro-analyse this, because that actually would be for my benefit and not for yours. I'd just be talking endlessly about something that you innately understand. But the fact that you are going through this or undergoing this rebirth of sorts where your boundaries are up against 
you know, what are the more difficult and negative influences out there in the world and those which, you know, at a point previous to this you would have just soaked up like a sponge because, you know, that's what, what Pisces does, it's the ultimate what do we call the re was it wasn't the last one the one before right the cosmic washing machine like you you take all of these things into you you work through them you cleanse them you release them but there's something much more self-directed about what you've been taking note of is already inside of you what you've been washing what you've been cleansing and how you have created um, a powerful sense of self in the middle of it right Rather than being this uh, slightly chaotic sponge, it's like recognizing what you do and how you do it and why you do it has shown you that you are actually the whole the whole last washing machine, right? And as such, you can choose whether now is the point where the cycle is going to start or whether that you don't have the spoons for that just now, right? It's rather than doing things by default, introducing this level of mindfulness and, and self... Uh, so I don't like to use the word self-interest too much because it does have these negative, um, pejorative kind of um, aspects to it. But I would differentiate self-interest from selfishness. I don't think Pisces likes selfishness at all. Well, nobody really likes selfishness, right? But to be self-interested and self-protective in this very gentle way, right here, seems to me to be a very powerful thing indeed. And this little cherub that's sitting in the middle of the, uh, of the card there, and sitting, in fact, in the middle of the cups there, this rebirth of sorts. Right, coming to the surface as actually, uh, you know, actually who you are. Now, additionally, the Nine of Cups also talks about your highest goals, hopes, dreams, aspirations. It has a similar sort of flavour to it as that particular interpretation of the Star card. But obviously, the Star is major arcana, and this is minor arcana, and that's very important because, in addition to understanding that our our emotional state is our business, everybody else's emotional state is their business, and we are not obliged to pull, you know, emotional washing into ourselves to, to wash it. Instead, we can sit there as being a, a, a machine that can decide when we're going to do that. It's less about big universal energies happening at you that you are powerless to resist, and more about what you do in order to bring your highest goals, hopes, dreams, aspirations to fruition. Because again, it's about the responsibility that you hold for that. Now, all of that happening over there brings us to here. And we have the Knight of Pentacles, which like I said is Virgo energy, which is also interestingly your uh, opposite sign in the Zodiac. We have the Justice card, which is a hella big energy to be sitting right there. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. Now, the Justice card is uh, represents Libra energy. And the South Node is almost done with its cycle, if you will, through the sign of Libra. This has been affecting us all collectively. And so what may well be going on here is the completion of a cycle that is ending, right? Letting things go, right? The, the South Node is all about the things that we have learned, been, uh, been exposed to and given an opportunity to process in a way that furthers us rather than restricts us or limits us or holds us back, right? But the Justice card is also about consequences of actions, and we see how that ties into personal responsibility for these things over here. We've got this really, really big energy of being like, what do you want to be responsible for? What are the consequences that you wish to bear versus the ones that you have just simply borne because you did not think that you had the choice to do anything differently? We have this energy up here who is also... <clears throat> deeply responsible and is slow and methodical and whatnot but I am it's really fascinating that these two cards which have broadly similar kinds of meanings 
in so much as they both talk about discipline and commitment and hard work. But they are all both Virgo cards. Right? What we've got here is you taking what is, to the rest of the zodiac at least, this abstraction that is Pisces energy that is so difficult to understand for other people. And there's no criticism there from me. You know, I absolutely adore you all, Pisces. But I've also said that sometimes I struggle to articulate exactly what it is that I am feeling. It's like it's... It encompasses such a range of things and it's so complex and so nuanced that I think unless you are a Pisces, it's a very difficult thing to to, to completely understand. Right? Maybe there's something kind of reductive about the way that the rest of the Zodiac try to reduce what you feel and can feel and do feel on a regular basis into words. Right? It's just a little bit heavy. But Virgo sitting on the other side of the axis from you right? and I do think that the Pisces Virgo axis is that of healing or and healer probably more specifically right whereas uh, Pisces is about that kind of big cosmic washing machine right the awareness of the oneness of us all um, the the only sign perhaps that is not subject as much to the illusion of separation, but therein lies a problem in and of itself because you're right at the other end of the spectrum and what, what's been really difficult for Pisces to work out is how to develop this sense of self that seems to come so easily to the rest of the zodiac. <clears throat> Virgo energy, by uh, uh, conversely, is very much about the practical application of the healing energies the healing modality right so it's about uh, taking things apart and checking that they work and then putting them back together again and using that to to help people whereas there's this huge acceptance of everything with pisces now like i'm kind of going off on a side quest here a little bit but i'm kind of not because what i'm saying is that there's a different kind of direction that you pisces seem to be taking moving forwards and it's less about what you're taking into yourself and washing as per the cosmic washing machine cycle and a little bit more about oh hang on I have skills I have attributes I have assets I have things that would be useful here on this um, particular plane and how do I start bringing them through in such a way that they are useful for other people rather than working in purely an energetic and, and actually probably because of that slightly separated way from everybody else. How do I step forward and bring something that is truly valuable to the table? Now, the, the reason why I feel like this is such a major turning point for you is because not only are we taking things from the kind of up there and bringing them down here, we've got the Justice card also highlighting the fact that there is some sort of maybe predetermined, maybe predestined fork in the road for you that is planting your feet down here on the earth. Oh, this is so interesting. I actually did a reading with a, with a client the other night that, that was addressing this exact issue. Like, how do we bring this all out where other people can benefit from it in a conscious way that they can perceive and they can see? Because... You're ready to start investing everything that you've learned, Pisces, in some sort of really practically applicable way. Let me just pull up this deck here. Give it a shuffle and see what it is. You know, for me, the Page of Pentacles is a card that denotes discovery of value. Right? We see it in the, in the Page of Pentacles. He's holding it up and he's like, whoa, this is gorgeous. We're moving beyond that to the Knight of Pentacles. And the Knight of Pentacles puts this front and center and says, right, I am going to see this through to its end. But because it's very earthy, as opposed to, for example, quite abstract, it's then perceivable by other people in a way that the abstraction is not. But like, 
here are tangible things that you can do, here are tangible results that you can achieve by utilising this. I mean, for some of you, it might have been that this is something that you've been kind of circling doing for a while, but it's like, how do you translate that, that pure esoteric, um, like scotch mist energy of Pisces down to something that can be perceived by other people like it might have felt like it was too much of a jump and <laughs> you were probably right at that point that something is changing something has shifted and I don't know whether this is within you or whether this is within the people around you that you have access to that you can do this for in some sort of tangible way like this mm. Ten of Cups, another Pisces card. King of Pentacles, Knight of Wands. I mean, this very much is putting the emphasis on the here and now. Knight of Wands being an incredibly present card, right? It's Sagittarius, so it's ruled by Jupiter, which at least in ancient astrology was also your ruling planet. Um, <clears throat> but it's here with the King of Pentacles. Now, what the King of Pentacles does really, really well is, is root a vision in the ground and says, this will turn into that. And these are the steps that I am going to take because this is the value that I bring. This is the value of the idea that I have. I'm going to take all of this up for the betterment of everyone. I've often said that the, the precondition that is necessary for a Ten of Cups to actually exist is everyone involved turning up in a Nine of Cups state. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean everybody taking responsibility for their own shit. When you've got a ton of people who are taking responsibility for their own stuff, all right, understanding that it is not everybody else's problem if they're having a bad day, or understanding that if somebody else is having a bad day, it doesn't ruin yours. You know, um, things like codependence and, and people pleasing and all that sort of stuff, all of that thrown out of the window, just people showing up whole and owning their own stuff, then the Ten of Cups becomes more than the sum of its parts. You know, what, it, what can be created by a ton of people all showing up like this is an order of magnitude more. Because everybody's doing their work. Everybody's doing their thing. <clears throat> and the rewards come at a magnified rate. Well, what's going on here is that you have a vision and you've probably already or always had a vision. But what's been missing is the way to implement it. Between the Knight of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles, this is now becoming apparent. Now... King of Pentacles is Taurus energy, and Taurus, uh, you know, is often a teacher. It's often someone who can break things down to such uh, small parts that are easily digestible that other people can follow the trail that they are creating rather than Pisces that seems to drift across the ground and obviously needs no trace of where they have been, right, energetically speaking, um, <clears throat> if you were looking for a trail to follow at least anyway. There's something really solid about what is showing up here for you. Now, it doesn't have to be all Pisces in the world suddenly tweaking and going, oh, I need to be a teacher now. But at the same time, you've had several dry runs of this, Pisces. Um, and forgive me, I can't even fucking remember if it was this year or last year. I mean, time is just sort of blurring together. But I do remember talking about how you were schooling the Zodiac. I think it was earlier this year. Um, that was in an abstract, energetic sense. This is not. This is absolutely not. So if some of you are thinking about becoming uh, spiritual guides, spiritual teachers, you know, whatever, that this all goes very well for that. I mean, perhaps this is something that you've been doing. Um, as a sideline, maybe it's something that you've been doing personally, just just out of interest to do it, you know, a hobby or something like that. But this is really rooting something deeply into the ground. You notice that we don't have an Ace of Pentacles or anything like that here. I don't think that you need it because the work has already been done. The work has already been seeded. It's almost like uh, having planted a seed and grown it in a little nursery first. What we've got is a plant that is now ready to brave the elements outside and we're planting it there and we're going to give it loads of 
I don't know, cow manure or something like that, loads of water. But it's time for it to take charge of its own development. Whatever has been seeded in you, or by you, Pisces, a while ago, it's got to a point where other people are going to be able to perceive it. And this has long-term consequences for you. It starts now, but the longer-term consequences are part of the story that you were always here to run, if you will. Now, <clears throat> when we move into October for you, we've got the Moon, we've got the Death card and we've got the Two of Cups. Like I said, if it was any other sign, and the Moon card being here, I, uh, I would have said, oh, fogginess, confusion, con you know, potential illusion, things like that. But the very clear message was drawing down the Moon. Now, the process of drawing down the moon is is a is a manifestation practice, right? But even again, then drawing down the moon, right? The abstract, the illusory, the yeah, whatever they can be seen but can't really be touched. You are pulling it down here, and this is the thing that is rooting. This is huge. Because the moon also covers things like intuition. It covers the, the awarenesses that we have that without really knowing how we know them. You know, the moon also, for me, talks about the subconscious. And I wonder if there's a there's been a dual fold shift that's occurred here somewhere. So not only are you shifting into such a position as you know how to root this thing that you've been working on and just you know is part of you naturally. Not only can you root this into this plane so that other people can understand it, but there's been a shift in the receptivity, maybe because people have jumped up a little bit and August was a month that changed everything for a lot of people. And we're going to see how that plays out over, well, from, from here on out, really. Whether they are now able to perceive in a way that they could not. You know, this is really, really strong. The death card is a card of transformation. It, and people talk about it in terms of endings, but was it the second law of thermodynamics? Like energy is not destroyed nor created, it simply changes form. And so I refuse to see death as an end to anything. I mean, yeah, something is ending, but at the same time, something new is bleeding in because that always, there's no space. There's never any space. We create space, things come in to fill it straight away so there's a transition here and a transformative experience that is contained therein and then we have this two of cups now this is about coming together with another person and some people jump to the conclusion that it's oh it's a new relationship or something like that and that you know it's always the romantic the sexual it's all that sort of stuff and Whatnot. But it, it talks about much more than that. It, it talks about simply shared goals, shared vision, shared view of, the, of, of what is and what will be and all that kind of thing. It's coming together almost sometimes feeling like a magnetic attraction to somebody else who shares what you consider to be important, which is something that you spent quite a long time considering over here in its various different forms. So the Two of Cups can be a business partner. It can be a new friend that wanders in. It can be uh, all sorts of things. But what characterises this energy is a level of intimacy that was not possible before that has been now discovered. There's a transformative experience. We've got this big moon energy here, which it feels to me is, is connected to the earth now you have earthed it, you have grounded it. And then we've got the ability to be able to share that with others in a way that was not possible before. Tell me about the Death and the Two of Cups cards, please. Five of Wands in reverse. <laughs> death and the sun also the three of pentacles now at the bottom of the deck I, Pisces you're going into building mode 
Now, of all the signs in the zodiac, you were probably the one that, you know, least likely to be involved in the tangible building of something together with other people, which is not to say that you can't, it's just that it's not naturally the way that you, you work. For example, Taurus, King of Pentacles, would be much more likely to be looking to focus, understand the value of building something tangible down here, whereas Pisces is very much about what is out there. The Five of Wands in reverse is about stabilizing what has been conflicted now sometimes you know the, the five of wands can indicate warlike energies right but at the very least it indicates you know competition strife conflict it's kind of an abrasive energy and because it's five and if it's in the upright it's talking about an instability somewhere right uh, aquarian insight used to refer to probably still does right to the, the fives as the agents of chaos, and, and rightly so, it was a very good way to describe it. Fuzz, then, if it shows up reversed, what we have is a stabilisation of energies. Right? There's no longer conflict and ructions and confrontation, whether, you know, joking and sporty, or whether warlike and aggressive. What, we've ha what we have is, is the ability to bring peace to a very unsettled, unstable situation. We have the death card again, so it's transforming. And we have the sun. Now the sun, if the moon rules the subconscious, then the sun is the conscious mind. It is mindful, it is, it is done purposefully. But it's also about accessing what gives us joy and hope. <clears throat> and that hope is really strong here, Pisces. It's very strong. Now, look at these cards together. We've got the Queen of Wands, who deals with the understanding of why we actually do things, like what the actions are that we take. But she is also the most visible of the queens, right? She draws attention to herself naturally just by existing. And I do feel like you, Pisces, are drawing attention to yourself for a skill set that you possess, that you have found a way to translate into something tangible that other people can perceive. I brought it down a few octaves so that it's resonating at a, a level that is comprehensible by other people. But you feel very confident about this, as you probably should, because you've managed to root the moon. <clears throat> right? Bring it down here and be like, come over here and touch the moon. It's magical. And we've got the Ten of Pentacles. We've got stability. We've got security. We've got structure. And the Ten of Pentacles can talk about, you know, finance. It can talk about m money and business, actually. It can talk about inheritance and all sorts of things as well. Sometimes it can talk about a, a building of some sort. But what we've going, got going on here is, is you just hitting somehow within yourself the magical formula to translate what you see up there, what you feel up there, down here in a way that can practically help people. Are you noisy fucker? Why don't you sit down somewhere please? It's just a little wasp. I was just checking it wasn't a hornet but it wasn't a hornet because hornets are really really loud and I would have fucking known about it. Anyway, the point is there is a structure that is, is being created here. In a world that is losing its structure Pisces has suddenly found theirs. That's huge. In a world that is increasingly divided and conflict driven, you're finding a way to bring peace. And you're doing it one soul at a time, two of cups. It's, it's you sharing what you are. There is a ripple effect here, Pisces, that is being set in motion because people are ready to cooperate with you now and you are ready to build on it. That was not accessible before, but it's accessible now. And this is huge. This is really, really big. So. Are you not a wasp, you're a bee. 
There we go, that makes a bit more sense, doesn't it? The bees come in to say hello because you're about to start getting really industrious, Pisces. There's building to do. Like, it looks like everybody's moving into your world now, <laughs> you know, and, and you know this like the back of your hand and you've found, you've found some way to make it comprehensible to people. Or maybe, like I said, maybe they've jumped up and so they can see a little bit more than they could do before. This is huge. It's really, really big. If I was reading for any other sign, I'd be like, sorry, this is really vague, but I, I don't feel that for you. I feel like this is absolutely spot on. It's a little Bulgarian honeybee. So I'm going to leave it here. Um, I'm going to go to the extended. So if you'd like to join me over there, you're very welcome to do so. You can do that on Circle. You can do that on Vimeo. Either is absolutely fine. I'd be delighted to see you in either place. Um, leave it here. I'm going to go and gently catch this bee uh, and evict it because it's not going to find any flowers in here. <clears throat> proud of you Pisces this is amazing work this is this is outstanding I'm really really proud of you and I'm so proud of how passionate you feel about it okay maybe it's not proud maybe proud's the wrong word right but but I get it I understand that's that's something that I connect to really strongly you know so I'm going to leave it here Know that I love you all very, very much, and I'll see you soon.